Okay, it's called Dig Crumb here. Hopefully I've remembered to have things recording this time. But anyway, not just having the camera pointed at it and not recording anything. Anyway, you may remember this from several videos back. The stage that I've made where I animate my cartoons on. I've got the camera here and the lights. And you may remember it had all that complicated circuitry on the top and I took off and replaced it with CFL ballast to run the fluorescent tubes and as you can see it works well, one thing I forgot to mention is how to connect a fluorescent tube up to a CFL ballast so that's what I'm going to show in this video okay I've taken the top off now so we can see more clearly what's here there's the two fluorescent tubes and a CFL ballast for each tube and this thing here, just pretend that's not there because that's not really important. Okay, so you may think it's a little bit complicated to run one of these off a ballast, but it really isn't. I mean, you've got lots of stuff here, but you don't need to worry about that. All you need to worry about is the two connections here and the four connections here. Now these two go to your AC mains your 240 volts or 120 or whatever voltage your mains happens to be and these four connections here go to the light as you can see you've got two on this side and two on this side these two go to the two pins on one end of the tube and these two go to the two pins on the other end of the tube and as you can see here I've got this connection here which goes to this pin here and this connection here which goes to that pin there and on the other side I've got this connection here which goes to this pin here and this connection on the end which goes to this pin here and that's how simple it is and you don't need to worry about um, getting the pins the wrong way around because there basically isn't a wrong way around for instance if I was to take these two wires off and make it so that this white wire was on this pin and this blue wire was on this pin it would still work just as long as the two pins on one end of the tube are connected here and the two pins on the other end of the tube are connected there it'll work absolutely fine now I know some of you may be wondering exactly what this thing is for well that's a uh, rectifier that I've made it takes the mains AC and rectifies it to about 330 volts DC and that goes on to power the ballasts and the result completely flicker free light so even though these were designed to run on AC without any kind of modification at all they can actually be powered on DC and in fact they work better on DC than they do with AC of course one thing you must remember is that although it's safe to power these on DC in this case I'm powering them on rectified mains do not Try that with an inductive ballast. You will blow something up if you try to do that. Of course, there's nothing wrong with powering these on AC like they're supposed to be. And even though you do get a little bit of flicker if you power them on AC, the amount of flicker you get is so minuscule you won't even notice it. In fact, it's a lot less than most other lights do. As long as you don't need absolutely completely flicker-free light, you can eliminate this entirely. Anyway, let's just take a closer look at the rectifier, because some of you will probably be wondering about that. Exactly what's going on in there. So, zoom up. Sorry that the picture's gone dark, but for some reason my camera goes dark when I zoom in. I don't know why. Also, better unplug it, so I don't shock myself. Make sure that's all drained. Okay. Got a fuse here, that's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to say what that does. And across the mains AC we have a capacitor. That's to filter out some of the noise. Next along is a 2 mega ohm resistor. That discharges this capacitor when it's not in use. Then there's an induct um, a choke. That does further filtering. Then we come to the actual part that rectifies the AC. We've got four silicon diodes. They're 1N4007s. And they can withstand about 700 volts before they fail. So that's well within the limits. And last, 
a big 68 microfarad capacitor. And this is about the 50th take I've taken it, and I always forget this last part here, this little black thing that looks like a capacitor. That's actually a thermistor, special type of thermistor to reduce the inrush surge. And that's basically it. Runs absolutely perfectly. Like I said before, if you just want to power a light from a CFL ballast, in almost all cases you won't need this. You can just connect this straight up to the AC mains and that will run just fine. But for my purposes I need the light to be completely flicker free because the webcam that I use is very sensitive to any mains frequency flicker so that has to be eliminated. But there we go. I guess that's all there is to say. So until next time, goodbye.